into my cul-de-sac and puts a ladder up and the fireman climbs up the ladder and I'm the fireman. Oh, and it starts out with a pickup truck driving by and the hick from the first video and his wife are in the car and he's like, that kook's still up there, I can't believe it. And you know, and, uh, and I play the wife as well. See, now you're like, write this down, must see. And, uh, and so then the fireman comes up and he's like, hey buddy, we're gonna get you down, we're gonna take you to Petro Pump. And, uh, and so they, they escorted me like down off the roof and I showed that video and then I walked out on stage at Metrocon still with the beard and the robe <laughs> like they brought me straight to Metrocon from my roof. So that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yes, with the checkered armband of joy. Uh, uh oh. We're totally doing it. Are you going to come to autographs? You guys come to autographs and we will hug and take photos and make movies and <laughs> bake some cupcakes. We're doing it all, okay? okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's Ugaya. <laughs> Claymore, yeah. Rigaldo, right? Yes. He is, yeah. Well, I, you know what? That's what an actor loves, you know? I mean, you love doing stuff that you don't typically do. Good morning. You, you love what you don't typically get to do. And so any of those kind of characters that are different or, or demand something different out of you, actors love that. that you know what I did? I did the lines like three times. When he, when he turns into the lion, in Claymore, he's talking about Claymore, I'm sorry, I didn't, he's talking about Claymore, and I play this character in Claymore, um, that he's a, he's a normal guy, but then he turns into this silver lion, and he's, you know, ripping people up and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Like that. And um, when, when he turns into the lion, his voice changes. Well, what we did was, we actually, re I re record the line three times with different inflections. You know, like, you know, one time I may say, uh, you can't get away from me. And then the next time I may say, you can't get away from me. Just change the inflection. But tempo, timing is the same. So then they layer them together and make this weird kind of a, you know, eerie, spooky kind of a sound. So, um, yes. And I actually, you know, what's a little known fact about Claymore, I actually directed some of Claymore. Um, I did a little bit of directing. Colleen Clinkenbeard asked me if I would direct a couple of episodes, and I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Now, I walked away. I heard you guys back here go, oh, he left. You had something, a question? Yeah, um, can you do the miniskirt bit? Girl. <laughs> See, I should have trusted my instincts. I should have walked away. See? Thank you. I, I promised myself I would not do that line anymore. And as much as I love you, and we're still making cupcakes later, I promise. Um, I, I don't I don't do that line anymore. It it has to die. I it applaud, must die. Many die. things in this world must live. That line must die. Yes, okay? Yes. And I wouldn't be fair to all the people that asked me yesterday. And I'm like, no, I can't do it. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, then it, it must have been nice. It must not have been horrible. And earlier, I, I saw Fallout, and I made a silly comment about it. Like, oh my god, Danielle Vick! <laughs> and then I was like, wait, that's the first Christian Elliott movie I've ever seen. Yes. Oh, well, that's okay. Well, that's adorable. I'm glad you watched it. And I, we all have a good sense of humor. So you don't have to worry, like, you know, that I would be offended or anything yeah. by joke, by funny joke comments. Yeah. So I'm wondering, how did that you Oh, you know what? We met at an anime convention. <laughs> what are the odds, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anime Expo. Um, the first year that I was a guest of honor at Anime Expo, um, I was doing a panel, much like this, 
about three times this size. It's the Anime Expo. And, uh, and here's this hot girl in the audience. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> you're very pretty and you're not 14. <laughs> Two good things. So uh, we started talking and we just really hit it off. She's awesome. Yes, Ash. I'm glad you asked. That's something that I'm sure a lot of people want to know about. How do you get into voice acting? Um, ow! Just poked my leg. Um, you guys, uh, I was really blessed because I got into it when it was still very, very small. Um, it was a, a, a very tiny little uh, subculture of, of people that, that made it and watched it and uh, it had not yet become as popular as it did about, whatever, five or six years ago when it kind of exploded and it was everywhere. But um, here's what I would suggest for all of you guys that are interested in doing this kind of work. Number one, the key word in voice acting is... Acting! Acting. It's not about making funny voices, you guys. I have a very limited amount of funny voices. And if you look at a lot of the characters that we play, especially main characters, they don't have funny voices. Because main characters, you, you don't want to listen to that kind of funny voice for 800 episodes, you know what I mean? Um, the, uh, the goal is not to imitate other, like, characters that you've heard. Like, I, I have people all the time say, you know, I, I, can, I can sound just like Homer Simpson, or I can sound just like Scooby-Doo, or whatever. That's awesome. That's really great. It's funny. I'm sure your friends love it. But there are already people doing those roles. Um, chances are you're not going to get cast to play Homer Simpson. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not really about imitating certain characters or uh, voice actors. Um, it's about acting. And every one, of the, uh, every one of the voice actors that I know, every one of them, well, okay, I take that back. That's not exactly true. I know about 100 voice actors, and I can think of two who don't have any theater acting training. The vast majority of them have a great deal of experience in acting and theater. Many of us actually have degrees in theater. Like, um, I mean, I minored in theater in college. I majored in film and minored in theater. And then people like Lucy Christian, and I know several others, have like degrees in theater. And they all do stage work and on-camera work. So they developed their skills as an actor long before they ever got any opportunity to voice act. So that's the first thing, acting. Get into plays in your school. Get into community theater. Most cities of any size have community theater. Get into church programs. Take acting classes in, at different places. Look into developing your skills as an actor. That's the first thing. Second thing is, you just have to be where the work is. Um, that's not the greatest news. That's not, I know that's not the best news, but it's, it's just the reality. If I wanted to be a country singer, where would I go? Texas. Nashville, right? Go where that kind of stuff is done for the most part. If you want to do certain things, there are certain areas of the country, certain cities that specialize in different things. When it comes to voice acting, Los Angeles, Houston, Dallas, Vancouver, Canada, a little bit of New York, yeah, of course, New York, where, where Lisa and Pokemon um, is done, and a handful of other things. Um, and that's really about it. I know there's a little teeny bit occasionally that's done in North Carolina, not a lot. And there's a little teeny bit I've heard that's done in Toronto, Canada, not a lot. But those are the places where this kind of work is done. Now, let me real quick differentiate you guys between voiceover and voice acting. Voice acting is, is what we do, anime, okay? Voiceover is like commercial work, right? Which you hear everywhere, you know? Come on down to Bob's Steakhouse. We got two ninety nine dollars special Thursday through Friday. You know, right? Or, you know, if you're suffering from hemorrhoids. <laughs> right? Those are commercials, and they're everywhere. Any city of any reasonable size, even little towns, have commercials because the businesses in those cities need to advertise, right? They want you to know about their, their car dealership or their dry cleaning business or whatever it is. And so they're going to make commercials for their business. And